Good morning, Sir Weasel. Time for another day. Are you excited? Oh, fantastic. Looks like we got a nice fresh layer of snow to just barely cover up the sheet of ice that's in our backyard, making it twice as slippery. Fantastic. Still gonna be a good day. As long as I don't fall and break my head open. Should probably be wearing my helmet back here. It is pretty slippery. How many of you guys vacuum your couches? It's actually our couch covers, so we actually wash our couch covers and we vacuum them. I think it's stuck up sometimes. There we go. Look at that, like brand new, like dogs don't even live here. So, Britt had a few things to do today herself. I'm going out on an adventure. I'm taking you with me. All of us, we are going to see a few sites north of Winnipeg. One is in St. Andrews, one is in Selkirk, and if we make it up there, we might start there first, because uh, it's further away, Scanterbury. Uh, these are drive-in sites where you just drive in, take a picture. So the first thing, let's go to Scanterbury first. It's a giant red and white chair. Oh, the excitement. This is part of the 101 roadside attractions in Manitoba Challenge. I call it 102 roadside attractions because I added the Mennonite Landing Site in St. Agathe. We went and saw that a few days ago. So, we're already in Winnipeg here. I'm on my way. I got the weasel with me. It's my adventure, buddy. And we are about 45 minutes away yet. Okay. Without further ado, let's go see a big chair. So we're going up to do the far one first. It's about 35 minutes from here. It's about 55 kilometers, you know, 32 miles or so, something like that. These sites are getting further and further away from home. <laughs> like I said, we're starting off with the close ones, right? Got those out of the way. And now they're uh, getting a little further and further, turning into little day trips, you know, or little afternoon trips already. Uh, to get them all done, we're gonna have to go on a few overnighters. Not sure when we'll get that all done, but I, I'm, I am really looking forward to going up to Churchill, Manitoba. I've always wanted to go up there and see the polar bears. Uh, we're probably gonna take the train up there. And once all of these restrictions and lockdowns have been eased and uh, things get a little better, probably head up there that'll be a fun trip I've always wanted to take a, a train ride like through the wilderness like that and the only way you can get up there is by train unless if you go over the winter roads in winter or by plane I'm hoping to do that sometime next year
There's South Beach Casino. I can still remember when they built that. I remember when they built this too. Wavers. It's got a wave when you go by. Is everybody waving? Are you waving? Man, I wonder how the casinos are doing with this whole lockdown situation. That must just be killing them. That's the second person I've seen today with their Christmas tree on backwards. Will be on the right. Karen, I'm talking here. They have their Christmas tree on backwards, so they have the pointy part facing forward, so that when they drive, all the branches get ripped off by the wind. <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> oh, there's the chair. So we're here at the Broken Head Community Store. Your destination is on the right. No, actually, it's right in front of me, but thanks, Karen. Broken Head Community Store here. And the flags are at half mast here, or half staff. I wonder what happened. Oh, I wonder where I can park. I want to go walk over to it. Can't drive all the way there. Well, we definitely weren't the only ones going to look at it. There she is. That's our big chair. What does it say on there? This big lawn chair, which was made and donated by John Bear, is in memory of Nelson Stir, Nelson Star, aka John Bunn, who entered the spirit world July 30th, 2007. Nathan was one of two wavers that stood along Highway 59 and waved to passing vehicles on their way to the beaches on their or their summer cottages. Nelson stood alongside his brother James Starr and were known as the Wavers of Brokenhead. Nelson spent a lot of hot summer days standing or sitting in his favorite chair, waving at passing vehicles. Many people stopped to say hello or offered him a bottle of water or even a special treat for him to enjoy. So with this big chair, the legacy of the Wavers of Brokenhead, Ojibwe Nation, lives on. That's a big chair. Like, look at, look at me beside it. That's my hand on here. <laughs> so yeah, we're on uh, First Nation land here, I believe, Ojibwe. And Lake Winnipeg is a little ways over that way, but we're close. So there's a lot of cottages around here. I never knew that. I guess that's why that gas station over there was called Wavers. Because of the people who stood along the highway here waving at the cottagers. Never knew. It's definitely colder here already, and we're just a couple of hours north of where we live. We've got a lot more snow here than we do. Like your big chair, man. Give you your big one. It looks fit for a weasel. I sit on it just like this. So, one side off the list. This one was the furthest away yet of where we've gone. This was about 115 kilometers from home or about 65 miles or so. So not too far, we've got a big province. We're still in Southern Manitoba, but we're north of Winnipeg. I don't know if this would be considered the inner lake. If it is, it would be like the Southern tip of the inner lake. The inner lake is the land between the lakes, like Winnipeg, like Manitoba. And uh, like this, a lot of uh, First Nations reserves uh, spread up, spread out between here. And uh, this one, what did I say? It was in Ojibwe nation uh, most first nations out in our area are either uh, Anishinaabe Ojibwe or Cree I think those are the two, three biggest ones and then uh, uh, I think there's a few other smaller ones maybe out west not sure but hey we're all Canadian now it's all one nation now uh, coast to coast to coast all right so I guess the next one is, where's my phone? I almost forgot to take a picture. I had to come back and get my phone so I can get my picture. I think the next one is down, uh, is it Selkirk? Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, it's in Selkirk, it's that big catfish. I don't know why they have a big statue of a catfish right in their town, but uh, we're gonna go find out.
I used to deliver Pepsi. That was my first real truck driving job. And uh, we deliver around Manitoba. And the last time I was up here was when I was delivering Pepsi. Take the next right onto Kitson Road, Manitoba 212 North. We're just coming into Selkirk here right now. You know, the memories flood back. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. I mean, the people were all right. Manitoba 212 North for four kilometers. But the work, the work was hard. And the hours, I didn't, it was long hours. It was a good job, it was a good job, good benefits. It was a union job and you know, it was good pay. And uh, I liked it. So coming up here now, I'm like, wow, I remember when I delivered Pepsi there. Oh, I remember when I brought Pepsi over there. It was a pretty fun job. It, it kept me in shape, that's for sure. Sometimes I miss it, most times I don't. Beautiful little town up here in Selkirk. Do any of you know anyone in Selkirk? It's north of Winnipeg. It's along the Red River, but it's where the Red River has widened already because it's already had the Assiniboine River and Rat River join it and the Seine River. And it's a pretty powerful river at this point already headed up to Lake Winnipeg. You don't want to fall in really. The currents can really suck you under. And uh, it's one of my greatest fears actually is falling through the ice on the river. That's why I don't go on the river in winter. I did it once on the snowmobile and I've heard stories of people falling through the ice and the current is so strong under the ice that once you go through, whoo, you're done, you're carried. Before you even realize you're underwater, you're like 50, 100 feet down the river under the ice and no one knows where you are and you're done. You're done. That is a death sentence. So uh, riding down the Red River can be very dangerous. I would not recommend it to anyone, but a lot of people are adventure seekers. That's a beautiful church back there, right? And a lot of people uh, like that kind of rush, you know? It's not for me. I don't know, I kind of like this life I got. I, I only get one. I'm trying not to lose it over something silly. You know? I'm trying my best. It's really cool. This is all in my province. There's so much more here than you realize. Especially if you're not from here and you just pass through in the Trans Canada all the time. There's actually quite a bit going on here. We got a lot to be proud of here. But that doesn't mean we're not a flyover province. People still fly over us to go from, you know, the, the big fancy, fancy cities like Toronto to Calgary or Toronto to Vancouver or Edmonton. We're just the Manitobans that nobody talks about. <laughs> but hey, that's cool. It's home. Here we are. It's right there in front of Smitty's. Take a look at that thing, eh? Your destination is on the right. Clean our window so we can see out. No, it's not on the right. It's straight in front of us. What's up with Karen? You can see someone else was here recently too. There's other people doing this challenge, obviously. They're gonna beat me. There it is. <laughs> She's a begging. What's it say down here? 
says, place to honor the memory of Chuck Norquay, who through his love of fishing, the Red River successfully promoted Selkirk and District as the catfish capital of the world. November 10th, 1955 to August 18th, 1993. God rest his beautiful soul. Oh, so Selkirk is the catfish capital of the world. Who knew? Now you know. I didn't know that either. What does this say? Landed in Selkirk in May 1986, Chuck the Channel Cat is dedicated to good sport and good fishing. This is Chuck. I'm gonna call him Big Chuck. He's huge. <laughs> if you're looking for him in Selkirk, he's right in front of Smitty's restaurant. Diesel! We learned something new again, man. Selkirk's the catfish capital of the world. The whole world, man. Right here. Congratulations, Selkirk. Nato. What's next? The next one, we got one more on the way back. It's in St. Andrews. And I think this is just the St. Andrew bison. I think it's just a bison statue in a field by the river. Ooh, it's along a very nice crescent though. A nice, uh, down river road. A lot of nice homes down that area, man. If you live in this area and you got a little bit of those fancy paper rectangles, if you got a lot of them, you probably have a house in this area. What are you dinging for now? What now? This thing's always dinging. I never even know what it's notifying me of. I feel so old. Why are you making noises? All right, let's go pretend we're rich and drive down River Road. Yeah, it's definitely Lower Fort Gary that's out here. It's uh, like a heritage site. We'll have to do uh, another round of that. Once we see all these roadside attractions, maybe we'll do the heritage sites in Manitoba. That'd be pretty cool. It's one of the very first forts along the river here, and it's you know it got all the, the old school walls around it and stuff. It was a trading fort, I think, or something. Was it built by the British or the French? I don't know. We'd have to go there and find out. But yeah, it's Lower Fort Gary because the river flows this way from Winnipeg. So it would be lower. Eh. We'll have to make a day of that yet. That's it right there. That's Lower Fort Gary. Hard to see from here, but we'll save it for another day. It'll be a lot of fun to go check that out. I think the weasel deserves to stretch his legs just a little bit. Hold on here, Diesel. This is an unfamiliar area, so I'm just gonna put you up on your lead here. There you go, okay? I don't want you going running into that traffic over there, but you do need to stretch your legs a little bit. Come on, bud. Come on, my little adventure buddy. Definitely colder up in Selkirk than in Steinbeck. Not even that much further north, but you can feel it. It's colder. And you get these massive houses over here yet. Like, wow. Wow. That is nice. We're not on River Road yet. Lower Fort Gary is actually right across the road over there. So we just pulled off here to let him out. Let him stretch his legs a little bit. Give ourselves a little breather. I think I got quite a bit of footage today. I'm happy about that. The last couple of days I haven't haven't gotten much. So today you're getting a full length feet. Full length, full feature. No, full length feature presentation. Is that what you call it? I don't know. It's a longer vlog. I like these. <laughs> I love looking back on these and remembering where we went. Good boy, weasel. Okay. Okay, come on. Up, 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 up. Up, up, up. Good boy. Good boy. A little cold up here, man. It's cold on your paws. We don't want to leave you out there too long. Oh, you're such a good boy. Everybody loves you. Everybody watching right now. They're watching because of you. You're the star, man. And apparently it's only minus seven Celsius. So we got a long way down yet. Lots to look forward to. We better get to this bison before the sun completely disappears. We're not gonna be able to see it at all. We have arrived. River Road. No idea why they called it River Road. 
Couldn't be that there's a river right there. Couldn't be it. It's not it. Definitely not it. So these are all river lots. Riverfront property. Continue on Manitoba 238 South for three kilometers. See how big the river is here? These people living in style. Tell you what. That is awesome. I love this road. If anyone asks, we live here. Okay, Diesel? Our house is just around the corner. It's the biggest one. Okay? Ask Santa. He's right there. That thing was moving. That display was moving. It was actually... Santa's sleigh was floating. That was weird. That was cool. Cool. Weird, but cool. I don't even want to know what the property taxes would be here. I guess we should know, eh, Diesel? We live here. Right? <clears throat> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, this is our road. Definitely. Definitely. Biggest house. Oh, definitely. Everyone knows it, right? It's tremendous. It's huge. Absolutely gorgeous. Watch out there, Mr. Chevy. This is my neighborhood. Watch out. <laughs> You know, I make all kinds of smart aleck comments and stuff, but I'm really happy for the people that live here. You know, they've worked hard. They've worked hard and, you know, they've achieved their goals. Good for them. Maybe one day we'll have a, a real house down here. <laughs> Probably, though, uh, more south of the city. I don't have any family up on this side of the city, and we don't have any family history here either. So my family history ties me to southeast Manitoba. And I like it there. I feel at home there, you know. And plus, who would want such a big house? You know, you gotta take care of it then. Imagine heating those houses. You don't just gotta take care of it, you gotta you gotta keep it warm in the wintertime too. Look at this guy's Christmas lights here. Wow, he's got frosty out front. Did every tree. We would go a little slower, but I got Mr. Chevy behind me wanting me to give her a bit more. No sightseeing for us. These are a little further off the river, but still nice. It's getting a little dark out to see them. They've got a whole screened-in porch right up on top. I bet you that's their master bedroom. Wow! That's a good idea for when we build our house. I'm gonna turn around on these people's driveway and make them all nervous. Watch this. Don't you hate it when people do this? Look at that. It's for sale. Anybody want it? Wow! Well, that's a house. Right, Diesel? One second, let me get out of here before they come running out here. Who are you? Who do you want? <laughs> buy my house. No, I can't buy your house. I could maybe buy your garage. I'll take the garage. How about that? I probably couldn't even afford the garage. <laughs> Look at that. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that garage has a big in window in it. Meters, turn right onto River Road, Manitoba 238 South. Quiet, Karen. I'm dreaming. Don't interrupt me. I came down this road to get rid of that Chevy uh, so that he wasn't right behind me because we're probably going to have to go pretty slow to find this bison now. Hopefully we can find it in the dark. In 300 meters, your destination will be on the right. All right, so we're almost there. There's a river right there. And it should be right in here. Was oh, it even lit up? A little light here. I think this is where it is. Nope, it's the next one. It's past this. Where's the bison? Oh, there he is. He's got a light on him. Yeah. Your destination is on the right. There he is. Can you see him? He's just hanging out in the field there, but he has a little light on him. No plaque or anything. Came all the way here to see you, buddy. I'd like to go closer to him, but I think this is someone's private property. There's a big old fancy house back there. I'm guessing that big old fancy bison belongs to them. That's pretty cool. Obviously that has to do with the heritage of the province. Uh, long, long ago, millions and millions of bison roamed the prairies. Uh, west of here. Not anymore. Bit of a sad story, actually, for another time. But... Cool. That wraps it up for today. 